water field. Uh, an important thing to realize, and, and I know Michelle was mentioning stigma earlier, is um, during COVID, during quarantine, uh, many, many businesses were uh, uh, ordered, um, depending on where they were, state, city, whatever, they were ordered to close. The cannabis is, industry, for the most part, certainly in the medical states, uh, were, were uh, deemed a, uh, a necessary business and were allowed to stay open. It was funny here in Pennsylvania, the, uh, the, the medical cannabis dispensaries uh, were allowed to remain open. And for a while there, the liquor stores were closed. So um, it, it, the, the stigma little by little is starting to fade and people are really starting to recognize uh, the value of cannabis uh, as a necessary uh, um, treatment uh, in, in, the, in the healthcare field. Um, we have some interesting legislation uh, pending in November. Uh, our neighbor next door, New Jersey, um, has put recreational cannabis use, adult use cannabis use, on the referendum. And uh, from all um, indications, New Jersey will probably uh, go recreational um, in November. Uh, once that happens, it's then New York, then Pennsylvania, probably Connecticut, and then Delaware will follow suit. They're not about to lose. Uh, those tax dollars uh, to, to New Jersey. So um, an interesting year uh, for cannabis, uh, business-wise, politically, um, and it only speaks to um, why this program is, uh, is uh, continuing to grow, uh, continued interest, uh, and, and really filling, I, I, feel, I feel, filling a very valuable uh, role in, in the training and education of, of uh, people in the industry. I, um, as I started this uh, slide here, you know, so what can you expect uh, when you finish the, the program? Where, where do you go? Um, these are some of the jobs that uh, people go into um, with a cannabis uh, education. Cultivation is, is big. Knowing how to grow the plant, uh, it's, it's, very, it's a very uh, interesting science. It's um, hydroponics. Uh, in most states, they're, they're not allowing outdoor grows, uh, and most of the product is grown indoors. Uh, people who understand hydroponics and how to grow are, are commanding some pretty strong salaries. I would venture to say that you might even see this number go up a little more. They're just, although there's a lot of growers on the West Coast, uh, the East Coast suffers from a lack of uh, people with these skills. Michelle and I had a conversation earlier today about uh, um, finding qualified people. Uh, we're, we're continuing to uh, entertain the, the idea here at PIT of expanding our horticulture and extraction portion of the program. Extraction meaning pulling the oil out of the plant. Um, extraction specialists next. Uh, again, um, people with um, uh, more degrees than, the, than our associate degree, people with bachelors are commanding these types of salaries but there's a need for people who understand, understand extraction and, and a lot of the equipment that goes with it. Uh, some of the stuff is uh, very expensive. Uh, some of the stuff can be, uh, for people who are familiar with butane extraction, uh, can be quite dangerous if not, uh, if not used properly. People involved in manufacturing, um, you know, uh, whether it's edibles, vape cartridges, lotions, uh, again, some, some strong salaries there. Retail, uh, people experienced um, uh, managers, uh, people who understand how to run a retail operation, a demand for that as well. We, we, uh, ca caregivers is an interesting part of a program here in Pennsylvania that just got a, a lot more attention uh, since COVID. Um, people who are registered caregivers um, can, can um, uh, purchase and advise patients that might be homebound or they just don't wanna leave the house because of COVID fear. And then caregivers are allowed to, again, uh, assist them in product selection, uh, pick up orders, deliver orders. We, um, we have a partnership uh, with, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the, the organization, Soulful Cannabis. Uh, they, they do some wonderful work there. And uh, we are, uh, have a, a recent agreement with Soulful to continue with not only a partnership in their mission, uh, but also uh, they'll be providing internship positions to our students that will be getting more hands-on patient care experience. 
So uh, more to come on that. And really, that uh, that just got finalized uh, last um, uh, last Thursday or Friday, and uh, a press release will be coming out. Well, it might have already come out today, but it will certainly be out this week. So more to come on our, our relationship with soulful cannabis. Um, a part of the of the program that I um, I have a, 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 a real interest in is, is the support industries in this business. There's such a need for people who understand cannabis, understand the cannabis business, understand the cannabis rules and regulations in the state, and are able to operate and support the industry. My hope is for anybody who takes the course here at PIT and gets an associate degree, that they go on to further their education with either a bachelor's, master's, or even a PhD. The, the, um, you know, the, the value of PIT, and I know that uh, Laura and her staff will talk about this uh, at another point, we are a middle states accredited college, meaning the courses you take with us are transferable to other programs, again, as you continue your education, and hopefully you would do so. Certificate programs, and there's numerous programs out there. I know Hempstaff has one, CTU, Cannabis Training University. There, there, there are some fine programs out there, and they really give you a, a good overview of cannabis. But they're 50-hour courses, 100-hour courses. This, this is a, a two-year course. This is not a casual, hey, what's the difference between a sativa and an indica kind of program? This, this goes way deeper than that. And the fact is, a certificate is fine, but there's no transferable value to it. Uh, uh, our credits are transferable. Um, and again, I'm not going to list the schools. There's, there's, um, it's, I would just say every college that I know of. Uh, but again, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to our admissions uh, specialists to, uh, to help you with that. But again, support industries, and, and there's numerous. People who understand the IT uh, requirements of this job, whether it's understanding the software used in dispensaries, the, the computers and software used in the grow operations. There's a huge need for people to understand this. As you can imagine, the laws are unique. The, the business is unique. You're, you're never, you're not, you typically don't see hydroponics alone on such a large scale, 100,000, 110,000 square foot facilities. Um, it, it's new in, in, in many regard, at least here on the East Coast. Uh, marketing directors, and, and Michelle, you know, that's, that's up your alley. Uh, people who understand how to market, um, how to market the product, how to market the business, how to market the medical value. Uh, you have to understand the product to understand what you're selling. You have to understand it. Uh, human resource managers. The, you know, the people who do the hiring and the firing and the managing of the employees, there's a, there's a very unique skill set and people who understand how to hire and, and manage um, uh, uh, people working in dispensaries. Trust me, it's, it's, it's unique. <laughs> yeah, and I work, you know, for, a, um, you know, now a multi-state operator that is vertically integrated, which means we have a retail license and we have a growing license and the largest department in our corporation, which is about, um, you know, just in Pennsylvania, I started when there was only five employees. Now there's like 350. And the largest department is the finance department, believe it or not, <laughs> because, um, you know, it's a lot of, you know, cash handling, um, you know, money transaction, all that. So, and I, I know that's big in any industry, but it makes no difference for cannabis. And it's even more just because of all of the, um, you know, because it's not federally legal, there's a lot of different, um, you know, laws and things that you have to follow. The, you're, you're, you're right, Michelle. And I, I have it on my slide here coming up. Um, people with accounting backgrounds and cannabis knowledge are hugely uh, needed. Uh, the the uh, banking laws are different for cannabis businesses. The tax structure, tax laws are hugely different. Uh, for those who are accountants on the call, you have uh, you have restrictions on 280e deductions, um, and, and an accountant, excuse me, an accountant really needs to understand that to keep yourself out of out of trouble. Um, 
some other positions here and salaries I have up here, uh, production managers, um, uh, software developers, as you can imagine, uh, there is a, just a lot of computerization. There's a lot of tracking in this business. Uh, it's called seed the sale. Uh, and there's a lot of computer technology needed to track from it, from the point it's a germinated plant all the way through till it, uh, it, it reaches the consumer. Accountants, as we just spoke about, certainly uh, uh, a, a very necessary uh, skill set. Uh, web developers, uh, digital media managers, electricians, and, and people see this and like, what are you talking? Like, why electrician? First of all, an electrician needs to know when they go into a dispensary what the security needs are. That alone requires specialization. Then you have um, certain electrical needs for the vaults. Um, and the storage and, and um, uh, uh, the POS system, the register systems. But a lot of it is um, specialty lighting uh, and also working with your HVAC professionals. The, the climate needs to be right, the humidity needs to be right, the security needs to be right. Electricians, th th to have an electrician who understands the cannabis business uh, is, is a, certainly a valuable um, a valuable profession as well. Paralegals, as you can imagine, writers, people who write the menus, people who write product reviews, people who write uh, the, the, the standing operating procedure manuals, which you know the state requires. Writing is a very necessary uh, skill set. Sales reps, so you have these grow operations that are putting out product every week. You have to have sales representatives in order to, to sell the product, but they need to understand the product. You know, you're, if you're selling cannabis, your customer um, should not know more than you know about what you're selling. Uh, graphic designers, and I, I mentioned previously, HVAC technicians uh, for climate. You don't want a lot of product going stale, dry, or moldy. Uh, real estate agents. There are towns, every town that I know of has a certain restriction where and where you can put a dispensary, where you can put a grow operation, where it's allowed, where it's not. Uh, real estate agents um, typically don't know that information. You have the NIMBY, uh, not in my backyard, uh, people out there. Real estate agents can provide a very valuable service in this industry. Executive assistants, administrative assistants, security guards, and not even just so much a guard. I would hope that people would, after attending this program, would go on and, and, and get into a more specialized security role. Uh, and that is also, um, that is also needed. I'm just going to give you my, my contact information. If you want to take a minute to write it down or my cell phone, um, I, I answer both. Uh, I email me anytime. Uh, don't call me on my cell phone anytime. I go to bed about nine o'clock and I wake up at around five 30. Um, so don't wake me up. <laughs> um, but I, what I want to do, I, I guess questions are coming in. Um, I'm going to go through some of the questions, but I do want to spend another minute here. I'm going to do a stop share and go back to the screen here. I, I want to introduce, I have some students here, and I just want to introduce you to them. So when you are thinking of a question, um, perhaps you want to reach out to them specifically. Um, and I, and I, there's a lot of names here on my screen. So I, oh, there you are, Vic. Hey, Vic. Um, so Vic uh, is uh, like, I said in the beginning of this um, presentation, he's just about done uh, with all the cannabis courses. I know you're finishing in May, Vic. And yeah. my, my, my question to you and the same question is going to be to both Jordan, Jordan and Mimi is uh, number one, um, what made you decide to pursue this program? And then what are your plans once complete? And has, and, and has, <laughs> short questions here, three questions, not two questions. And then now that you've taken the program, has it changed your career path any? Okay, go ahead. Um, so I was working at the airport. I had like 14 years in there. So I was thinking about just getting full time there and just riding that out. It's like a comfortable position, but it wasn't really mentally stimulating. I knew I just wanted to do something more that was something I was more interested in. And cannabis, I've always been interested in. So my buddy uh, went to Pitt for uh, uh, computers and said that you guys opened up a new program uh, with cannabis. So I was like, oh, I'm, 
gonna go I'm gonna do that. That's awesome. Um, but uh yeah, like I it exceeded my expectations. Uh it definitely helped me because I'm in the industry now. I actually work in the apothecarium. And um this class has definitely uh actually probably did more for me than uh if I didn't take it. It uh like the uh the regulations class while boring i like go into my dispensary and i'm like looking at stuff thinking like is that regulated i don't think that is but yeah like it was just like something that i've always been interested in and uh yeah i just jumped at the opportunity to uh through the class i didn't think that class was boring at all Vic. <laughs> It's one of the most boring classes. Yeah. It's very but, mar but your marketing it's class was awesome, right, Vic? Oh, that was amazing. That was top notch. Yeah. Okay. Very yeah. Uh, Vic, it's dinner time. I think your dinner's yeah. getting cold. Maybe you want to just maybe you want to scurry along there, Vic. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Vic. Uh, and so, so where where do you think you're headed now with this degree? I know everybody comes in and they think that well, yeah, I yeah. work in a dispensary, but it, it changes. Well, I mean, being in a dispensary and uh, like being in the environment, um, I, I'm i kind of in a crossroads where I don't know if I want to continue with the business aspect and like, you know, try to become more of like a manager type situation or go more of the science, like go into like a bachelor's for like, uh, like a grower or something. Because there's pros and cons to all of it. Uh, and there's so many opportunities. You really see that you could even like, you know, start a business as like an independent truck company that is delivering the product. Like there's so many, like just little avenues that you start to see when you uh, start to get it actually in the business. And like, once it becomes wrecked too, it's just going to explode. And like, yeah, you could go to like the out West and get these jobs, but I have roots in PA and this market's like, if you're in the ground floor, you're just going to like, you know, have the better opportunity to, uh, yeah, grow, no pun intended. This is a field where it's not so much when you're done, you want to get a job. For me, for most people, this is a job, this is a degree where you want to create a job. And I yeah, think that's, and, and that's where like, I'm like, I don't really know where I want to be because there's so many opportunities that, you know, it's like, do I want to go continue with the business aspect? Because I do like the grow aspect because like as you get more into like the, cl the classes with like say the terpenes, that's helped me immensely in my job as well because people come in and like your average patient's going to be like 55 so it's not just like you know the stigma where it's like some stoner dude just like you know i got anxiety bro like it's not <laughs> like that really like there is that kind of section of people that come in but like most of my customers are people you're like wow like you really actually get a relief from this product and you use it you know and it really works and they're off like opioids and opioids and all that uh, stuff so it is uh, actually fulfilling as well um but yeah like knowing the terpenes was definitely that class definitely helped a lot because uh it just gives you that extra knowledge that you know when the person you know is already they don't it's amazing to me because like i mean i've been smoking all my life basically like since i was like 14 but uh, it's amazing. I'm all around people that smoke. So I forget people don't know much about, you know, cannabis because I've been just like, you know, researching it for so long and people come in and they don't know anything. And you're, you know, then you see their face like, you know, go from like confused to like, oh, now I kind of know, have a better like, you know, coming into it than I did because uh, like it can be a little intimidating at first as like a new patient. And um yeah, I definitely found that, like, especially with your experience in the dispensary, that helped a lot, too. Uh, just seeing the little variables that you wouldn't get from just, like, a textbook. Thanks, Becky. Um, yep. And then the new, our newer students, and that's Jordan and Mimi over there. Hello. And Hi. so there's a, kind of the same question. So what made you um, pursue this program? Okay, so I'm going to answer together if you'd like. <laughs> a bunch of mumbo jumbo. <laughs> but, um, we've both been pretty much 
well, smoking too for a, a while now. And when we saw that there was actually, cause we were talking about going to school for a long time. Cause you know, everybody says you should go get your education, but we couldn't find anything that we really wanted to that we like have passion for. Yeah. And, um, we both decided to take the classes. I'm doing the health side. She's doing the business side and it's, it's definitely been very eye-opening. Lou is a very great teacher. He's very cool. Yeah. But yeah, it, it was like we, we always talked about going to school, going back to school, but we never actually pursued it because we were like, there's nothing that we want to do. And there was just one day I was scrolling, scrolling around schools in Delco and Pitt came up. And I was scroll scrolling through uh, the majors and I saw this and I was like, this is it. This is exactly what I want to do. And I sent it to her and she was like, we're doing it. And here we are. This is my first semester and it's her second. I'm about to be third. <laughs> yeah, you've got some fun courses ahead of you. you know, yeah. The one thing I would add, um, uh, there are some students that come into the program that really, 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 really know cannabis. They are... Um, I'll be in the middle of a lecture and I'll just reach out to someone um, and I'll say, look, are you hearing the same thing? Um, you know, is that, the, I, you know, I saw this somewhere. Because there's, there's also quite a bit of misinformation out there. Uh, and then there's some people that have never smoked, uh, don't use it, don't want to use it. And for whatever reason, they, they, they are fascinated by the business opportunities. Or typically, they have a family member that is using it, typically a child. Maybe it's autism, maybe it's uh, epilepsy, and they really want to understand it a, a lot better. Um, and, and this, and not that I want to take the fun out of the fun part of cannabis, but there, there are some of the courses we get into dosing, and um, there's a little bit of math there, uh, another, another uh, crowd uh, favorite. Um, you know, how many milligrams are in a puff? Uh, I, I think it's important. I'm probably the only person currently on the planet that thinks that's important, but, um, but it is, but it is. Um, so we really, again, we, we cover it pretty thoroughly. So, uh, and there's some questions here. So I'm gonna do my best here to um, read them and then also um, turf them out here um, to my panel of experts. Um, so there's a, 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 someone here. Um, they work at a dispensary and uh, let's see, they work at a dispensary, but they're interested in becoming a pharmacist. Uh, is this a program for that? Um, no, this is not, this is not for that. Um, the pharmacist side of things, you're welcome to call me. I can take, you know, I, I, not everybody, maybe that's a bit of a unique question, but keep my number and feel free to call me. I can explain. Um, I can explain what process to go through in order to 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 pursue pursue a career in pharmacy. So that that's an interesting question. Um, and then um, let's see. I see where. Uh, where um, here's a question. Somebody's already in the field. Is this program uh, for them? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I feel from my time working uh, with Holistic, and again, hiring bud tenders, some are great, some are, some are, some are solely focused on THC and what's strong. Um, and then there's some, then there, I just don't find, with no disrespect to any dispensary, but I just feel that there's, uh, they all have their own training programs and they all do a wonderful job, but I just feel that um, they don't have the time to provide the course, the depth of, 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 of knowledge that we are providing here. This is, not a, this is not a course for people who just, um, maybe just wanna learn a little bit about it. This is not that. This is not that. I mean, if you're if you're interested and in maybe you just want to find out the law or whatever, um, 
I do get people who want to find out just, they, you know, maybe just a little bit about horticulture and nothing else. I, I, I don't think this is for them. I don't want to turn anybody away, but uh, you have to, you know, honest, uh, honest information. This is, this goes, we go pretty deep into it. Um, yeah, and it's an associates program. So even if you're, somebody's already in the field, um, you know, in some of the higher level positions, like in your company, maybe bachelor's level positions, it could be a good jumping off point for, you know, whatever bachelor's degree you wanted to get as well. Um, but still getting that, you know, just like Lou said, that base knowledge of the industry and really all aspects of the industry. So then it can help you decide on like what part you even want to be in. There's another question. Are you done, Michelle? I'm sorry. Yeah, of course. Yeah. There, there's another question here. Somebody wants to be a grower. Is this the program? Um, yes, because you can't go into horticulture without understanding the plant. You, you don't know what you want to, you have to know what you want to grow and why to be in horticulture. And, and you have to know the rules and you have to know the effects. You're not just going to plop a seed in the ground and say, hey, look, I grew pot. It, it's just, that's not what this is. You, you have to know what you're growing and why. So, to, and then you have to also know what the rules are, the laws are, how it works. That's, that's hugely important. One thing I didn't mention is we do have a course called the Managing the Retail Aspects of the Cannabis Business. And, and then we go into, uh, uh, we go, it's a retail course. And, and it, with that course, we partnered with uh, the folks at Apothecarium where you'll spend some time, of course, this is on COVID hold right now, but you will spend time in working in a dispensary, getting some hands-on experience. Um, for those people out of the immediate area, let's, and we have a student that just enrolled from Michigan because we are an online program, that, that program is not, re the internship program is not required. It is for your benefit. Uh, it's not required and it's not graded. It's for your benefit just to add uh, some more experience to your resume. We also have a course, uh, it's the second horticulture course. If you are in the area, in the immediate uh, uh, area of our school and also Lancaster County, we've partnered with hemp growers. Um, so you can spend time on a farm. Uh, we can't grow pot at the school. We can't grow pot in the state, but, uh, but hemp is legal. Uh, it's grown the same, it looks the same, and yes, it does have some of those silly strain names as well. Uh, we take you from the farm to planting, harvesting, and extraction. For those who can't get access to the farm, there is a capstone project with that as well. Um, <laughs> and it's, um, it's, it's an interesting, you know, the, the theme of the program is seed to sale. And, and you start off picking your strains the first week, uh, second week, you're gonna tell me how you're growing it. Uh, by the end, you're gonna tell me how you're extracting, what you're making, why, and at the end, you're gonna give me a menu uh, and, 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 it, and it's gonna make sense. Um, and that is the option for horticulture. Now going, uh, providing a very, very long answer to somebody who was looking to go into the growth part of things. Yes, this course does provide you with that. I would say, um, my fatherly lecture is take these courses, take this degree, take these credits, and at least go on and get a degree in horticulture or botany or some kind of plant biology degree. You, you will thank me. You will thank me. Um, a few other questions came in. Um, uh, would this program assist in securing a license to produce uh, certain strains? Uh, yeah, we do go over the application process. Um, it's an expensive business to get involved with. Right now, there's limited, in Pennsylvania, there's limited licenses. But once the law changes, and, and it's going to change. It's, it's going to change. I mean, there's no maybe to it. Um, as licenses then open up, yes, you would have the information from this course in order to, in order to submit a legitimate application. Uh, you should see some of the applications from when Pennsylvania opened it up back in 2016 for people wanting to get a license because it's public. It's public record. Uh, I find some of them to be just hysterical. Um, can you talk a little about the security aspects? Can I talk a little bit about the security aspects? Somebody uh, in law enforcement. Um, we do go over 
Um, one course is the political aspects of cannabis. So we go right through uh, from the, the its first recognized medicinal value from 3000 BC all the way up to present day. That's 5,000 years of cannabis usage. Uh, we do go over the most recent 85 years of cannabis prohibition, which is what we're currently in. Um, so that course covers the historical prohibition, illegality of cannabis that applies to law enforcement. And then there's another course just called the legal aspects of cannabis. And, um, and that's, uh, and, and we get into that as well. Is it, um, who, geez, is it more, is it a law, law enforcement? I, I, you know what, that's a, somebody call me, whoever submitted that question, call me tomorrow. Um, I have, I have more questions about your question. Um, uh, somebody has a question here. They're interested in growing cannabis. A lot of growers out there. Congratulations to you all. Um, uh, business or medical? Um, I don't know. Vic, business or medical track for growing? What do you think? You're on mute, but what do you think? I mean, uh, is the medical more of a science-oriented degree? because I think that would segue really well into like, you know, horticulture. Um, but then again, business, you can really go, I don't know. I don't know. I'd say science. Um, Probably science, yeah. Could yeah. you do like more science, like chemistry and stuff like that? Yeah, there's right? a bio course in there. I don't think uh, I have a business yeah. one. I'll say science. You're probably um, gonna have better credits transferring like uh, for the yeah, I would say I would say it would probably be the science. Yeah, you're, yeah, it's more science oriented. I think so. Um, I'm looking at another question here. Um, um, somebody's. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that day you had a, a loss in your family, uh, and that's sad to hear. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, and they are interested in becoming a caregiver, and. Um, you know, this is what it's. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna read it. Your whole question because it was some personal information. Maybe I can read it here. Whether it's not so personal. Uh, there is a desperate need for people who can navigate the medical marijuana road in order to help elderly people uh, who are either too overwhelmed or afraid of the stigma. Um, every now and again, we throw out some business ideas in class. Uh, my my <laughs> my latest. Uh, I don't know if it was for the folks that are on the call. You know. Um, it was a uh, it was a Betty Crocker cannabis cake mix, and then my latest would be you know the Betty Crocker cannabis easy bake oven. No, it's not for children, but we were having some fun with some ideas of what you can do with uh, this uh, knowledge. Um, the the one thing that I find to be a huge a, a huge need is that the the state of Pennsylvania makes it quite difficult. Uh, for people who are suffering from various medical conditions to go into a dispensary with a nurse, a caregiver, a relative to select product. Now, if somebody's going in there, I don't know what the condition could be where it might, uh, they may have some difficulty um, communicating with guides or, or interpreting the menu. Um, caregivers play a huge role, huge role there in, in that, but there is, there's probably a need for someone who can set up a Zoom call with the patient and the patient's caregiver and then get on the Zoom call, and bring up a dispensary screen. But of course, it will be apothecarium because they're our favorite. And go over the menu with the person on Zoom. There, there's a need for that because the state doesn't allow non-card holders into the dispensaries. That's a problem. That's a problem. My other, my other idea, again, kind of addressing these things to help people who may not want to go to the dispensary, you know, um, I'm going to say this and no one's going to know what I'm talking about. Um, to do like a, um, a home sales, I'm going to call it Tupperware, but nobody knows what Tupperware is anymore. And everybody's going to laugh at me. But there's no reason why you can't go into a home and, and then explain to give them a little course on how this product is used. There's a lot of different accessories in order to vaporize the product. And, and there, there's a huge need for people to understand 
vape devices, vape temperatures, what's used for flour, what's used for oils, what's used for solid concentrates. There's a big demand for that as well. So I think I gave you the, um, the person a very long answer to a very short question. I'm famous for that. Um, and then, uh, and then Laura, Laura, thank you. This, this is, um, so this is a, both a synchronous and asynchronous program. Synchronous is you can attend a live lecture. You can, when we get back into the classroom, that's, love that. Uh, uh, it's a strong culture in this field and classroom interaction live is fun, really fun. Um, so the synchronous in the classroom is my favorite. A uh, synchronous online, you dial in and you listen to me live, or asynchronous, the lectures are all recorded and I don't know what, you have a work schedule that doesn't fit well with our course schedule. You have childcare issues, you're, you're now you're teaching a third grader uh, home. Uh, I don't know what the situation is. So all the lectures are recorded. Um, so it's synchronous and asynchronous as well. All courses are online. Um, and Laura, you've been looking at the questions. Did I, did I miss anything? <laughs> did I miss anything? I believe those were the remainder of the question. Another one's coming in I think now. So. Um, now that we've gotten through, so we don't have a real uh, uh, everybody answering a question, but if you want to come off of mute now There's and a ask more a question. questions that went through, Lou. Oh, a couple more. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how long do you have to complete the program? Does it have to be two years? Um, I think you can do it in probably 18 months, right, Laura? It depends on how many classes you want to register for at a time. So, you yeah. know, you could choose to take one class at a time or you could choose to take five classes at a time. It's really dependent on your schedule. Uh, this program, like Lou said, is available 100% online. You can live, you know, across the country and take this program. But it is fun in the class. Vic, you've, you know, and uh, Jordan and Mimi have not been in the classroom, but Vic, you've been in the classroom and it's some pretty... Yeah, classroom's the best. Yeah, I can't wait to get back in the classroom. Well, I guess I'm not now because, yeah, we're all done at most. You come back anytime, Vic. The know. online classes just, are good just, too. Just show up, yeah. But uh, yeah, the next class is the hemp farm, which I'm excited for. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, that just went out today. You saw that email, so. Uh, what? Yeah. What was the uh, farm called? Your wild fox. One is Wild Fox Farm. They're up in Bartow, yeah. Pennsylvania. And there's a number of other, there's uh, five other farms that we're affiliated with. Uh, Wild Fox Farm is an interesting farm because not only do they grow hemp, they ex they're not doing extraction there, but they are doing product formulation there. Uh, uh, they got a commercial kitchen there. So they're doing some pretty cool things. Wild Fox Farm in uh, Bartow, Pennsylvania. Nice, nice, nice people. Um, um, are we going to the other campus again? Um, um, the no, campus is coming back. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Laura. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say a couple more questions came in. Um, do you have to pay for the program? Yes, the program. Um, we charge tuition and fees for the program. Uh, we do accept financial aid. Grants and loans are available to those who qualify. And we also have an out-of-state scholarship. If you do not live in Pennsylvania, you can apply to that. Um, do you accept transfer credits? Yes, we do accept transfer credits from accredited universities. So during the admissions process, um, if you leave your information for me, I can have an admissions representative contact you and then you just submit your um, transcript from your whatever college you attended and then we, we submit it for a review. And as Lou was talking about also, we're, we're still 100% um, online due to COVID. We're hoping to return to some in-person classes in January. Um, as you all know, things change daily. So, you know, that is our hope, but, you know, this program is 100% online anyway. I saw a question there, what type of textbooks are being used? Uh, just um, anything and everything. We'll, you know, we'll refer to some of Raphael Meshulam's writings. We, we do a lot from uh, 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 Russo. We'll look at, um, Oh, geez, Michael Backus. We'll look at his book, uh, um, Cannabis Pharmacy. Uh, Cannabis Science Index is another one. Um, this one just came out. It's really funny. Higher Etiquette. 
<laughs> we just talked about that. So Emily Post has a etiquette book many, many, many years ago. This is her great granddaughter, and she wrote a, a, a book on cannabis etiquette. Puff, puff, pass left. Remember that. So anyway, well, whatever's that, you know, whatever, whatever adds to the content. Um, uh, there's a lot of crazy information out there. We try to avoid that, but we do talk about it as well. We do talk about if something's uh, in the news, uh, whether it's right or wrong. So, um, are there going to be any classes this semester? Yes, the fall term starts October 3rd. Third? Third. The fall term starts October 5th. Uh, Fifth. We're not <laughs> having any um, classes on campus for October, though. Our hope is to be back on campus in, in January for some, some classes. I hope so. Um, I did have another question. Someone asked, uh, do you have to take any prereq classes? So during the admissions process, you take a placement exam online. And that determines uh, if you have to take any uh, prerequisite classes for math or English. There's a cost question just came up. Yeah, so our cost uh, for tuition is $400 per credit. Most of our students take around uh, anywhere between seven to nine credits per term. So we have, we have 11 week terms at PIT. We have a fall, winter, spring, and summer. Okay. Am I getting them all? If you want to come off Any mute, I think we're, we were exhausting a lot of questions. And if you'd like to come off for mute, I do like to hear people. No. Hello. What? No. Oh, hi, Camille. Hi. <laughs> How are you? We just spoke last week. I was driving, so I didn't want to disturb anybody. Um, we have already talked, Lou. Yes, hello again. You know that I am a, a licensed massage therapist and I have my own mobile spa. So I am already a business owner, but because of COVID, I had to close it down. Um, but I wanted to know on the marketing aspect with this program, how would that help me with getting a cannabis product, um, I guess, to be marketed? and also do it along the lines of the law of how to use it on my clients and patients? Um, the, my, my question, the short answer, the short answer is, um, I, I think you're probably better to stay in the, CB, the hemp CBD world. Mm -hmm. There's a enormous, enormous need for people to produce reliable, properly labeled, properly extracted uh, CBD product. Um, there's, there's no, uh, CBD I think, um, there's a lot of people who don't want the euphoria medically of, 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 T, of cannabis, of THC, they just don't. Um, some people really want it, uh, some people really don't want it. So I think once CBD starts getting the attention uh, of of special of the specialized growers, it's you know it's grown it's grown. I don't want to get into a whole course here, but it's the hemp's grown outside and that's fine, and it's grown by seed and that's fine. But you're not seeing strain standardization. You're seeing climate differentiation. When CBD starts getting more attention hydroponically, and 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 maybe start looking at some of the strain development. I think that's going to be the best route. I, I can, I'm going to go, I can answer this question all night. I will not. But I think in e, for, for effectiveness and ease of marketing, you're probably, you would probably do very well uh, going to see, visit our friends at Wild Fox Farm. And yes, uh, Libby, say hello to Ben for me. Um, but that might be something to consider. Uh, that's, a, that's the path of least resistance. And I think the path of, of great opportunity as well. We don't just, we're not just teaching THC here. We're just not. Hemp's, uh, hemp's big. Any, others? Any other questions? Yes. Hi, Logan. Was that you? Yes. Hi, how are you today? 
Okay. I'm doing all right. Um, yeah. I'm wondering uh, what exact degrees you guys have to offer. Uh, in just the cannabis program or the entire for the whole school or just cannabis? Uh, in the cannabis program. We're currently offering an associate's degree uh, in cannabis business and then an associate's degree in cannabis health therapies. Okay. And then there's the school itself has a, a hugely vibrant, uh, um, a very large program for uh, practical nursing, LPN, physical therapy assistance, uh, uh, certified medical assistants. So recently added a sonography program. Um, have you seen the school? Have you been, have you, do you know where we are in media? Uh, no, I haven't been there, but the uh, media that's close enough. Yeah, in Manchester, it, you should drive by. It's a it's a beautiful old stone building. It uh, it's cool. It's a cool building. Um, my other question: Do you guys have any uh, relationships with any uh, any facility? Any like actual cannabis businesses, uh, specifically grow facilities and extraction facilities? Uh, in Pennsylvania, perhaps like a hiring pipeline? Well, um, for extraction, yes, we have, uh, um, we're, we're, we should be planning a trip uh, at an extraction facility. <laughs> it's pretty far away. There's, uh, you know, we have Avrakind in Chester, and then we have Ethos in Fairless Hills. Um, for various reasons, we do not have an agreement with either of those two, and they're close, and I would love nothing more than to have an affiliation with either. Uh, but as far as extraction facilities, there's one in Allentown currently that is doing CBD, hemp oil extraction, and then another, another facility out um, in Crescent, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's probably a long drive, but uh, um, we'll try to get out there as well. The, 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 the extraction, part of this science, the taking the oil out of the plant and then making stuff, capsules, lotions, concentrates, whatever, is, is fascinating. Um, that's my passion. Some people may find it boring, but um, it is very interesting. On, on, uh, it's very, I find it very interesting to see how the product is actually made. So we're uh, still developing some other programs. Uh, not to divulge too much, but I you know I would love to see the program can, to add another separate track, more focused on cannabis uh, horticulture and more extraction technology. Um, but um, you know we're uh, we're getting there. We got a we got to walk before you run. So uh, more to come. And, and based on turnout tonight, um, uh, you know there, there's obviously just this uh, huge uh, huge interest in this business. And so uh, we'll continue to grow as the business grows. There's a need, it's supply and demand. There's a big demand for people who, who, have, who, have, who have really strong knowledge of cannabis and we're meeting that demand. Okay, thank you, Lou, very much. So we're going to wrap it up now. Um, like I said, we're going to send the recording out and lose PowerPoint along with um, Lou's contact information, my contact information, and also links to ask questions to admissions reps and actually a link to our college application to apply as well. Um, like I said, classes begin October 5th. If you are out of state, we have out of state scholarships, so please inquire about that during your admissions process. And I'd like to thank you all very much for spending your Monday evening with us. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your night. And thank you to uh, Michelle, Professor Molesky, and Vic, and Jordan, and Mimi for uh, helping me out. I do appreciate it, guys. And uh, good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank and you. I look forward to, to seeing everybody in class. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye.